Hey, welcome everybody. This is Pastor Larry Betancourt. We're talking about servant leadership today. I don't usually set this up. We usually go right into it, but I have to say this is a man who's greatly influenced my life. Pastor Larry, what's up? I love you, Zachy. <laughs> I say love Hill City. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm fired up to be here, brother. You've done a lot. You've done a lot for us through the years. And, you, you know, know, we all appreciate me. you. <laughs> we, we all appreciate you. What's God been doing in your life? I just want to open up by asking you that. Man, uh, that's a great question. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, man, uh, I'm a dad now mm-hmm. with four adult kids. Yeah. And so I'm just in loving the season of being a dad with four adult 20-something kids, and one of them goes to church here, and yep. she works here for Hill City. And, hey, Lauren Bennett. Hello, Court. Joe. Lauren she Jason. holds it down. She holds it down. She, she does. No, nah, man, I just Kim and I enjoying this. It, you know, every season's crazy. I know this is about serving leadership, but it's kind of a little bit like you need to serve your family. Yeah. And, you know, you serve you serve your, your spouse, and then you serve uh, – you know, you serve your kids in every season of life, and now it's kind of it's a different type of parenting, different type of serving. But I'm enjoying that, and plus, what God's doing at the church, you know, yeah, yeah. we're seeing God's blessings. So. You guys moved into a building. How's the building? Man, it's going really good, man. So yeah. we're figuring out that uh, we have a, a lot of utilities that we haven't had to pay for before yeah. because we always <laughs> rent it at least. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, man, and just dealing with uh, snow plowing and salt. Is it a boiler maker cooking. that you guys have yeah, in the ba- boiler? A boiler, yeah. I mean, gas prices are high. No, yeah. but it's just, it's 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 been it's been awesome. And uh, man, but our team is really gelling together, and that's kind of really what we do in ministry wise is focus on our team. And the whole fact of uh, of really growing each other as disciples in Christ, and yeah. that being kind of our big focus for twenty twenty three. Yeah, yeah, and you're you're settled in. I was able to make a service there. And, yeah, you well, awesome. actually, a couple. You of were them. awesome, man. We, well, I came to the up. opening. Yeah, it was like the soft launch. Yeah, you know, you didn't tell anybody that you were launching. That yeah. was smart. It's <laughs> a smart move. It was good. It's a Chris Camp move, isn't <laughs> it? Was, yeah, just the whole fact of that. Um, oh. In the business world, in the church world, you set this big date and yeah. everybody comes and, and, and it's like, yeah. it's like MAGA growth and yeah. it's not really, really realistic of what's going to happen. So we wanted to kind of get in, let our people get, find out all the kinks yeah. and then grow, you know, healthy, yeah. you know, instead of like explosion growth, you know, let's yeah. just grow healthy. And, yeah. and it's, and it seemed to work well. So, yeah. You are yeah. growing though. You're yeah. reaching oh, yeah. a lot of people yeah, right we now. Are. God's faithful, man. Yeah. So you yeah. have two services. Did you do two services right away whenever you opened We did. Up? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we, yeah. we we did that just because of giving people the the options and and knowing that really because of kids space. Yeah. You know, you know, we want to make sure. You have sure. a lot of kids now. Yeah, we do. You have like a hundred kids in here. Yeah, yeah. I mean like That's oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. Almost twenty five percent kids. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. It, it is. Yeah. I said we got a good team, man. Yeah. You know, just yeah. building the kingdom, man. Yeah. Yeah. Building the kid, loving people. And the train wreck happened. Yeah, you right you, by. Yeah, you Dan, you I sent you a picture. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if everybody realized that train wreck that uh what happened that cargo with those chemical cars man uh derailed and it was right in our backyard like 4 miles away yeah. uh, from us and so they you know, they asked us to evacuate, but only two people in the building that day. So it was an easy evacuation. So, yeah, yeah, easy to get out. <laughs> it was my day off. So. There's like five I'll, exits, two I was, people. I was evacuating. <laughs> they got the out sofa. quick. Yeah, <laughs> that was your day I'm off. Evacuating. Yeah, I'm evacuating. I'm evacuating. Just <laughs> have a coffee. <laughs> have a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were gone. That's good. That's good. But is that all cleaned up? They They did the... They did the explosion, they're, they're, the controlled they're, explosion, they, right? Yeah, that, that controlled explosion, controlled fire. They were worried about shrapnel. Yeah, it, if they didn't so. do that oh, the proper okay. way, yeah. So um, nobody got hurt. No one got hurt. No, Good. thank God. No, you know, and then you don't know the the, the environmental know, or long term yeah, effects. Right, yeah, you know. but we did. We didn't have any smoke, anything come our way. I mean, yeah. some you seen the picture, beautiful picture, and yep. really kind of. Kind of like whoa, it's like man. eerie. Yeah, it was yeah. like it looks know, like a volcano. It really does yeah. behind, but it's it was like it's a cool picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really was. Yeah. It really was. Yeah, um, yeah. We, you know, we were going to talk a little bit about servant leadership uh, today, yeah. and I know you brought your Bible, well, and I'm excited because like, I'm just because Jesus is the best servant of them all. <laughs> right, right. I mean, That's but it. you know, I, is, this isn't like this isn't like. I don't want to like over compliment. You know what I mean? I know yeah, how yeah. you are with that. I don't want to, but I mean, you know, growing up in your ministry, that's where 
you exemplify that, you know, mm-hmm. all the time, like servant leadership. You taught about it. You talked about it. You modeled it all the time, like going and picking up papers. I remember one time mm-hmm. you were, you were like at an event or something. They're like, you shouldn't be here. And you're like, I got to pick up the papers, you know, <laughs> <laughs> were you really picking papers up or were you, uh, I, I, you know what? Um, or did you just want to, no, no, it's uh, not what you expect. It's what you inspect. Yeah. yeah no, I, <laughs> it's kind of like that was, um, I went to a, a, a private uh, all boy parochial school in New Orleans, yeah. you know? And and uh, it was a historic. They had two schools that were kind of like the rival schools in New Orleans. That all boy parochial schools, and and then and the whole thing is you take pride in your campus. So oh, okay, uh, we were taught like you know by the brothers and by the faculty. Like if you see a piece of and, and it was kind of like a college field because they would let you go out oh. and hang out in the courtyard. I mean, so it had a lot of freedom, but they also wanted us to have a lot of responsibilities and they were training us to be leaders. Like that was one of the values. And they always said, if you see a piece of paper, like have pride in this campus. And so you walk by, don't walk by a piece of paper, boom, uh, pick it up and throw it away. Oh, that's where you got that. Yeah. And so, and that kind of then one of the first things I did when, uh, you know, I was youth pastor and, you know, you were there, we, we had a, we had, we adopted a highway. It was, it was because you got a free sign from the state and they Mm -hmm. put it up, you know, uh, right on the side of the road, you know. And so we just monthly had a response, like, let's just pick, I mean, how easy is pick up trash and serve your community and, you know, get a free publicity. No. Yeah. <laughs> get a little advertisement from little... it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but just kind of keeping keeping that model. And and just, man, my, my whole motto is, you know, Jesus first would be like Jesus. And, I, you know, Jesus was a servant, man. If, if he washed feet, he modeled the way and... Yeah, you know, and uh, let's just let's just do that, you know. Yeah, yeah. So just kind of simple, uh, you know. I'm, you know me, I'm simple, man. Let's keep it simple. Jesus serving. Yeah, that opens I think, the door, man. Well, I think one of the things I've always appreciated about you is that there's nothing that's below you, beneath you to do. Like you're gonna yeah. just yeah. do it, you know, do the right yeah. thing. And well, I mean, it's like it's like a mindset, right? It is. I mean, it's the, it's the. Uh, I mean, we don't know all the fact that all the stuff that Jesus did to serve his disciples, right? You know. Uh, and he was real. He was a friend, you know, and I'm, sh- I'm sure, you know, he obviously taught leadership and, and, but he modeled servant leadership. You know, it wasn't, yeah. you know, in the, you know, I have a master's in organization leadership. Woo. Yeah. Whoop you do. do. Right. You do. You really do. <laughs> like, no big yeah. deal. Right. Yeah. And so uh, I just did it to learn and, you know, and I didn't know these big words, but there's transactional leadership. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Hey, I do something for you, then you're going to transaction do something for me right and then there's inspiring leadership like hey we inspire folks and I, i'm i'm gonna you know try to be inspiring and encourager you know kind of feel that's a strong like you know and then and so that's yeah it, you can inspire people and then um you know and then you got this transformational leadership like i want to tra- like and so part of my leadership was to transform your life. Well, Jesus came and he modeled servant leadership, which, which was, hey, I'm going to transform your life, but I'm going to show you the way how it, it's not the authoritative down, you know, uh, not, it's not my way or the highway. I mean, there is a decision that we decisions yeah. that we have to make, but it's like, hey, man, we're all in this together. So if I can serve, you know, it's the inverted pyramid. Like yeah. if I can serve well, and that's the same thing. If I can serve my wife, if the, if my if people see how I serve my wife, if people see how I serve my family, if people see how I serve them. And at the end of the day, I think it goes back to, you know, why I why I try to live like that is do it unto the least of these you want unto the, you know? Yeah. And yeah. so, and so, you know, my dad would do the same thing, you know, he was a football coach and, and, um, and we'd go into a bathroom, you know, like, and the, and the, the area would be like wet. Hey, just get a paper towel, wipe that down. So, I mean, I found myself the other day, you know, at a, yeah. at a restaurant. I'm like, I'm just going to wipe this down. <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> I, I do it. Oh, I do it. I, that's too far for me. I, I, I got some growing to do. <laughs> and I do. I'll just, I know because you don't like germs. No, but, not at all, especially those germs. So uh, <laughs> so one of the guys in our church, he's our youth director, but he also kind of cleans the church. And every in between every service, I go in the bathroom, and I'm like, let's wipe down the bathroom. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like hey, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm the leader. Like, I'm a... I want to leave it best for the whole thing was to leave it best for the next guy. Like, he's yeah. Going. So yeah. I, I, I look down. I know it's good, but look down at the urinals. I'm like, this is – just wipe it down, right? I wash my hands really good. I don't – I didn't get the gloves on like most people do. I just wash them in hot, hot water. And, and my guy came in. I'm like – I was like, hey, you see what I just did? Like, I come in here, and I wasn't like – 
saying like, look at me, how great I am. I'm a servant. Like, yeah. I want I want the I want the bathrooms and the toilets to look good. Now and I know you yeah. guys clean it; it's perfect. But it's in between services. Guys are gross, yeah. and and so, yeah. I, I just figured like, no one's gonna know that. Now you do, but, <laughs> <laughs> right? But but it's like, okay, it's it's that's just kind of the mindset that that I, that I've I've wanted to take because I think it's. It's it's appropriate and it's doing it unto the the least of these, you know, and and being like Christ. So. It's interesting, like because you just you just talked about what I've seen, I think, through the years and what other people might not see. You know, what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. They that's, they wouldn't see no. the times that you chip gum off of chairs. You know, you clean the bathrooms. You know, you you do the, you do what's necessary. I think a lot of times people, leadership is you know I don't have a microphone. I'm gonna be the loudest voice, right? But it's really the bended. It's a bended knee. Yeah, it, right? it is. Yeah, is yeah. uh. So I, I think really like we've adopted this kind of this terminology is like uh, serving serving others is the language of love. Yeah. You know, like so. Yeah. It, it, because you know, and how many times I've seen you show kindness and love and so you know like it, and for people that never quote unquote can repay you back well yeah. man we're reaching to reach the loss you know yeah. and, and so uh at the end of the day like i thank god for people who serve before me to get to where i am right. you know you know to do that so it's yeah. like okay so hey i uh i I don't have to serve. I get to serve. Like it's not a got to. Yeah, you know, some things we got to do as pastors that I maybe don't enjoy. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. really, I gotta take the mindset. I get to do this because it's gonna love people. I mean, we we get tired. I don't want to do this meeting or that meeting, and right. you know, go here. I mean, but it's just a part of everybody has that. So it's not yeah. just a pastor, but it's everybody because we're all we're all in ministry. Like I love that scripture. And it's in Matthew uh, 22, and I'm not going to read it, but Jesus said, if you want to be great, be a servant. Yeah, right? yeah. And so, and, and so the great, I want to be great, and, and, but I, I've always, I think you asked me this question before, what do you want on your epitaph, right? Yeah. I said that he loved, that he loved Jesus first and loved his, loved his wife and his kids, yeah. like, and then he loved others. Like, that's yeah. what I want. Like, that's my greatness, right? And, and so, but Jesus said, if you want to be great, go serve. Yeah. And, and Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. Or that word in the Greek, and you would know this better than me because you are a scholar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> yes, you are, you are, I just know where to find you, the Greek. You, you, you're genius. <laughs> oh, and I love, I love I listening to you. I learned so much from you. <laughs> and, and, and you know this, right? You started, So servant means minister. Like Jesus said, I didn't come to be the King James, right? The King James yeah. says, I didn't come to be ministered to. I came to minister. I didn't come to be served. I I didn't come to be be served. I came to serve, and then and it really mm. is in that word. It's deacon. The, I guess the word where yeah. we get deacon, yeah. and and it's really interesting that that word uh, means waiter, like mm. waiting a table, attendant, yeah, or errand person, yeah. somebody that's going to run an errand. And so, like, man, I I just. You know, it's kind of interesting that movie, The Chosen. The you know, and like whether people think about it or not, you know, don't look at it from that type of like, oh, I can pick out this thing. But like the whole overarching pictures of how Jesus loved, and and Jesus yeah. cared for people. And I I think if we get back down to the to the nitty gritty or just the to nitty, the nitty gritty, nitty gritty, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's a little nacho quote. Yeah, that's a little nacho quote. <laughs> Come on, we gotta do that. I had a feeling that was yeah, coming yeah, at some yeah. point. Not you. Um. <laughs> I saw that mask you got me yeah. a long time ago. Not your mask. And I was in the middle of something, and Judah's like, hey, Dad, can you put this mask on real quick? And I was like, Not right now, but I will. I am. Um, I'm just gonna be. The, the nitty gritty. I think I'm gonna put it on t- tonight. <laughs> yeah. So when he comes in the morning, when he wakes up, he Man, sees I me. I lost that mask. Oh, I have it probably somewhere in my in my box boxes of <laughs> illustrations from when I was a youth pastor all yeah. those years. Where'd you get my, this? Uh, I bought that in Mexico. You got, yeah. Yeah, probably didn't wash it, though. No. <laughs> so you probably should go back and no, wash it. No, no, or I did. You probably, I did. You did. When I washed it, it curled out a little bit, the face mask. Yeah, probably just, <laughs> but really, like, the nitty-gritty of yeah. serving, like, you know, down at the end of the day, man. So, And we just want to be great for the kingdom, man. Like, we, we come to yeah. build a kingdom, not build our kingdom. And, and so, uh, yeah, man, it, and so, it is fun. So, man. like, where have... You, you know, you've seen, I think you and I have, we don't really talk about this. We don't talk, you know, but but in the same sense, 
where have we missed it in the church then? Like when it comes to leadership, like again, like I think the 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 thought of like, hey, it's the person in the microphone, but it's not, right? Like it's not. No. The greatest of all is a servant of all. And you know, think about <laughs> church leaders and people who are young and they're like, Yeah, I wanna I wanna be up there someday. You know, what did you tell me? You know, whenever I was young, I, I remember some lessons you, get, yeah. you gave me. Well, I, I'm not going to go there because yeah. I have lots of thoughts and they just thoughts and, you know, and, yeah. and, uh, you know, and, and I'm not here to compare my life and I don't want to compare my life to any other men or right, male right, or female. Right. Uh, it's just that, man, at the end of the day, you know, what is it about? What is it about? It, yeah. It's like, what's the calling? We All ministers, yeah. all leaders have the call to be sons and servants. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. like we're, we're, you know, we we bear the image of Jesus Christ, right. right? We're the image of God. We're made male and female. Like that's our calling. Like I, so I glorify God by doing what, you know, uh, Jesus said. Jesus was everything he said was a picture of what the Father. The you know, he's the picture of the Father. He's the picture of love. So, like I I believe Jesus said it, and then ultimately, he modeled it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know that whole um, just uh, just this uh, this. Um, last week I was listening to some sermon. I can't even remember right now, or maybe it was a on the YouTube. Uh, no, no, not on the Bible app. And they, oh yeah, it was on the Bible app, and it was a, a scripture. And one of the guys were talking about wherever it was. I don't know, but um, but it was when John John the Baptist, Jesus's cousin, and he says, "I am not even worthy to untie." untie yeah the straps of his sandals, mm -hmm. right? Because feet were gross, right? You, you know what I mean? Back in the day, they had open toed sandals and those pieces of leather, and they had to have the straps and they wrapped them up. And, and so that job when you went into someone's house was a slave's job, right? We know mm -hmm. that. Like, you know, I'm not teaching you anything you don't know. Or tell. And so the slave would come in and the slave, a slave, was the only one who touched feet. Mm -hmm. wow. the, the disciples didn't even touch each other's feet, right? You just see nowhere in mm -hmm. in in the in the Bible the disciples. Jesus said, "I am going to be a slave." And so yeah. John the Baptist, first of all, says, "Hey, listen, one's coming after me. Listen, I am not even worthy to be his slave. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, to untie his untie his shoes." And so, yeah. so Jesus then, you know, John thirteen, and uh, he comes in, and we know. He washes the disciples' feet, and they're like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" Like Jesus, you never do this because Jesus is going to do the job of a slave. He humbled himself, right, to come and wash feet. And he says, yeah. "Hey, this is an example. Not that we need to go wash everybody's feet in the church, but the the thing is, like, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to help our team, and we can't I, we can't serve every person. That's not that's unsustainable, right? But we teach people at the church models to go on out and to serve and to right. wash feet. And washing feet is not only sharing the love of God, but it might be like, hey, let's help out in a way that we can. Let's let's do the little things that we can do for one another. And 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 and, and um in, in John thirteen, this is just something I just I, I just want to um Jesus in John thirteen. And I, I love this. It, and after everything, and Peter's like, "Wash my feet, my head." And Jesus yeah. said, "No, no, no, no. Like, like that, that you're missing the point of this, right?" And, and then he said, "I speak to you." And this is out of the uh, the Passion Trend. I speak to you a timeless truth about serving. Like, so Jesus is saying, serving is timeless. And so I think what yeah, happens wow. is we've become the American Christians, in my opinion, right? Yeah. And we feel. Like, hey, to step up and preach, like that's the ultimate goal. It isn't. It's the it's the the body parts that serve that no one sees in the children's ministry, in the kids' ministry, the parking lot guys, the coffee people, the people saying hello, like that's the people, that's the body that gets and it's a timeless truth that Jesus was modeling that I think that we think now as young people, they like, I wanna lead the worship. And you do, like, but serve, right? And yeah. that was you'd mentioned my first job. My youth pastor was like, take the gum off of the chairs, the cafeteria chairs, because that's where we had church in New Orleans, 
and that's it. And and the, our whole our whole uh, worship songs, right? You know, back in the day, uh, what, you know, I won't I won't sing anymore for you, but you've heard me. Eighties integrity. The 80, well, eighties integrity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, I keep falling in love with you. It's oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a good voice. Back, and so, but my job, right? As He's a singing junior, to Jesus right now. As a junior high boy, right? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to hear me sing. Right? That's why you, yeah. you do that. Jesus. Though. Hey. I, that's what's so cool. You and I, we've been doing ministry a long time, and you yeah. know, I love listening to your worship. But, mm-hmm. but my 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 first job was uh, uh was to I was called the overhead guide, OG. And we back in the day when you put one of them projectors up, you know, and you had the transparency sheet, yeah, you yeah, put yeah. It, and it shined up on the wall. Yeah. And so my youth, I said, okay, you 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 know, you're that guy. I was the PowerPoint. I was the original. Nice. PowerPoint you're the original. Guy. Po- what and they called you the OG, the huh? Overhead guy. Oh, the yeah. overhead guy. Overhead Got guy. It. Yeah. Okay. And so, I mean, and I and I and just as a like a 14 year boy, I remember asking my mom to go buy uh, me like a little a little case. All the you know they would write in with that. Um, like a permanent marker yeah, on those like, and the folders. Yeah, and, and all I made that the stuff, folders, yeah. and I and, and I, I took so much pride in yeah, in like cool. being yeah. an overhead guy, and I would bring it, and I would know the song order, and then I would I would do that, and then you know I, I, that that's where you started. That was just something didn't even think of that until just right now. I was like, I, I just don't want to be that guy, you know. Yeah, I want to be the overhead guy. You yeah, know? yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. And, you know that that. And I think that's what, that's what to me that gives me the most joy. I mean, I, I don't mind preaching. I love talking. I love leadership groups. I love our team. I, I love hanging out with people. But um, at the end of the day, man, I, what gives me the most joy is serving, and 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 that's it, man. So we get to do that, and and so serve is what we do, man. It's like I. I like it's all about the serve, you know. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. all it's all about the serve. Have you but, found times in your life where you? lean toward a transactional model and you had to catch yourself. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. sometimes you don't, because sometimes, you, you know, you, pressure, pressure comes, right? Yeah. You, you know, the pressure comes or, hey, uh, you know, I got to get this done so, and I can be abrupt. I'm a coach, so it's not like all lovey, you know, I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. and, and so that's my kids. And um, Speaking the truth in love. Though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you speak yeah, the truth Yeah, too. but you know, sometimes you're like, you're under pressure, uh, you know, and you, we work comes together out at Jack direct. Camp and like, yeah, and, and you've seen yeah. me like, hey, come on, come on. And man, you just, that's why you just got to go back a true servant and say, hey, I, I, you know, I dropped the ball, man, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and so that, that pressure of, Really and honestly, like the pressure to say, like I want this thing perfect, and if it's not perfect, maybe it's a reflection of me. Right, you, right. You know, you know, like yeah. you know, like hey, maybe like oh, I didn't do a good job, and so hey, you're not doing this right, you're not doing that right. Instead of maybe I didn't tell them how to do it right, you know, right. or maybe I didn't explain the process, or maybe it's just gone a little bit longer and we didn't do that. So it's instead of you do that, I do that. But there is a part of that. But at the end of the day, you know, um, it's getting to the bullseye of true servant leadership. Like, you know, yeah. there, there, it is transactional, right? You know, there is transformation. There is inspiring. You know, sometimes you do have to make the decision. But at the end of the day, you, I think if you know my heart, that's what that's what where the, where the key yeah. is. You know? Yeah, there's typically yeah. there's a transaction in leadership, yeah. like always. So, I mean, it's not you know? it's not and it's not like means it's bad. Right. right. You know, like so. even if like I'm serving you, you can't give anything. So you look at me and you say thank you. Like yeah, there's yeah. a transaction there in some way. It's, you know, but I think much. but you tied together the pressure and the transaction. Mm. And I think we've both felt that mm. in various times oh, in life. Oh, absolutely. You know? So this isn't a perfect. I mean, and I don't think Jesus expects us to be perfect. He was all he was just saying, Hey, here's a timeless principle. Yeah. That love never fails. Yes. Yeah. Love is serving. Like it let's just let's just go go do that and 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 so I think uh you know, and, we're all called. Yeah. And but we have to choose to serve. Yes. I, you know, I mean, I, I might be a great, but I can still be up front, but I still need to choose to serve. So that's one of the reasons why maybe I clean the bathrooms is because I always remember, quote unquote, that God has given us this platform and 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 my platform isn't who I am. You know, my platform mm-hmm. is an opportunity to present Jesus and teach purpose, you know, so I'm, I don't need a mic. My platform is serving. Like, really, I can do more. And at the end of the day, what what makes a difference? How many people remember? I'm, I don't. No one remembers my ser- my sermons. It's like, and that's not my goal. Like, I would again. I, I don't mind speaking, but at the end of the day, what's going to make a difference in someone's life? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I remember Rudy Giuliani. 
you know, when back when the whole 9-11 thing, or, you know, he came out with this book on leadership. And it was just like Rudy's principles on leadership, whether you like Rudy Giuliani or not, you know, that's not the that's not the thing. But one of his one of his principles in that book was, hey, I'm going to choose uh, funerals over weddings. Like if I, you know, even to officiate or, or to go. Mm. And 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 so to me, it's like, hey, I'm, I want to choose and, and breaking that down. I want to choose serving over speaking. Mm-hmm. You know, because at the end of the day, I think that make that's what people remember. Me- remember your your example. And Jesus yeah. said, "This is an example I set for you." Yeah. You know, so speaking is not all. Cra- it's not all. It's cracked up to yeah. be. And you know me, and I get things backwards and uh, say do, things. You like, do a great job. <laughs> and <I> people, have, <laughs> people always count something. Pastor Larry said, "How many times did he say boom today? Boom." There was a season. Doug would yeah. count your booms. Yeah. I, yeah, I'll just leave that one alone. Yeah. <laughs> he got my booms. always. Remember? Yeah. What? No, what no, it? no, no. I just, I said something the other day in church, like, I kept saying, and I'm, I'm oh, yeah. You, o- o- OMG. OMG. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. And I'm just, when I get excited, you know, my brain just starts yeah. going, and I'm like trying to get all these details in and this 30 minutes of thing. And I'm like, oh, my God, this was fun. And I didn't realize I said it, Kim, and, you know, I got an email like, this was great, but I can't believe the pastor said, oh OMG. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, they didn't oh. even say it all. They didn't even write it out. They just said, no, no, OMG. They said oh, my God. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying, OMG to be, you know. Hey, nice. but with, you know, <laughs> no, the New Orleans <laughs> accent, you've probably said much worse. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Let's move on. Let's move on from it. I think we all have. Yeah. I remember one time I said, um, That's I really, I meant to say, <laughs> I still get it mixed up. I said, like, I love studying stars, and I meant to say astronomy, but I said astrology. And uh, everybody gasped, and I'm like, why? Like, why is yeah, what's everybody yeah. gasping? So like, oh, yeah, because I'm, like, studying the Zodiac? Oh, no, that's not what I was trying to say at all. Well, yeah, Didn't even realize what I said. Every day for me. And right? <laughs> this is it. That's just it. Yeah. The and end of day love. So that transactional leadership, There's. I, I just love the idea, like, I, I don't know that I've ever thought of that before, that, you know, sometimes the, the pressure leads us to those moments where – we act, um, I think about that as a father, you know, like there's just so sure. much going on and like the propensity to, you know, to, to raise my voice as a father, there's always a pressure behind it, mm. but like, where's that pressure coming from? And then that also speaks to identity. Mm. Is this a reflection on me? Am I looking at this as a reflection on me if I'm flipping out and, you know, right. coming yeah, in and taking absolutely. charge? Yeah. So, uh, so who are some of the inspirations of like leadership for you through the years? People who, you, you know, obviously mm. Jesus for servant leadership and- yeah. So, I and you go back to where your, my formative years were. It takes me back to when I was first came to Christ as a thirteen-year-old boy, and you know we, my mom mm-hmm. was very devout in the Catholic Church, and I went to like, this all-boy Catholic school, spoken school. It, it started in fifth grade, and it went to twelfth grade, but I repeated eighth grade twice. Anyway, <laughs> no, I, you so, repeated it twice, or you, yeah, did, you yeah. did it twice. I did it twice. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Well, I had to repeat it again, so I guess that's the way I said. Yeah, yeah. And so, in the midst of that, so I just got saved and got involved, and that's why it's so get important to, yeah. to have youth ministries, and yep. you know, in, in that. And and it, and it's and it wasn't the youth pastor. Yeah, it was uh, Brother Terry, and uh, hmm. and and he uh, he led the junior high Bible study, mm-hmm. and and he would. Pick me up, and so, uh, and this was this Afro American brother, right? And mm-hmm. I, and and he just, just he was doing his job as a servant, and it's just hey, I saw potential in you, and just or maybe he didn't see potential wow. in me, but like he was the junior high Bible study uh, leader, and we would go get a coke, you know, and because uh, I didn't drink coffee back then, and so just hang out, and then and then um, and then from that. You know, uh, just seeing him just care for me, and 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 he would come and uh, help help my family out. He would take my little sister, pick up my little sister Chris, bring her to school, whatever he could just to serve our family, and he did that for everybody, right? And um, so so Terry just modeled that. Like he didn't say serving leadership. He, he wasn't saying right. he was mentoring me. He wasn't saying he was disciple me. I think it was just loving me. Yeah, and love and serving. And then when I got to got to high school. Uh, this this wonderful man, this Catholic priest, who really saw potential in me as a leader. Like I think he was the first guy to see leadership in me, hmm. and his name was Father Charlie. 
and and he was the eighth grade religion teacher, and he also taught the seniors, right? You know, and and he was he was a traveling evangelist for see what you know for youth groups uh, in the area. And when I got to my junior year, he would always he would ask me to come speak to the eighth graders. So here I'm a junior or senior, and he would get me out of class, and he would say, "Hey, That's talk," and I would be preaching to these like he just tell them. You know, and he and he just mentored he just threw me. You to the fire. He, yeah, and then I remember a few times he took me to some of the CYC youth groups to kind of sh- to to speak. I mean, well, this man, I, and I'd say that this is the I, I wasn't the best English student or the best paper writer, and I was struggling to write a paper, and I was real, I was overcommitted, and I was one of those guys like, you know, football, and I worked in the cafeteria, and I was in student council, you know, yeah. and just whatever, wherever the people uh, yeah, were, yeah, yeah, man, just want to, <laughs> and so, man, I was, I, I had this, and I wasn't a great English student. I had a very, very, very hard brother, which I thank God, brother James McDonald, who. M- m- I went to him, I'm like, man, you know, I can't do this. And I really, I, I had that lack of confidence in my yeah. in my writing skills. And and Father Charlie's like, hey, I'm going to help you. And and so we would meet after school. We would go to the library, and he would help me. He helped me write this paper. Like, he took the time. He had no reason to help me write this paper. Mm-hmm. And I remember that. I was like, this guy, he, he helped me write a paper at a stressful time in my life. Mm-hmm. But the most incredible thing I saw him do was on my senior year, I was on my way to, and I had to drop like 20 miles to go to school and get up real early. And uh, and so I was in a, a five car crash mm-hmm. and I was the middle car and, you know, a 18 wheeler hit a truck and a wow. truck hit, that truck hit, a van, hit a van, a van hit me, I hit another person and I was in the middle. And so, oh, wow. but it was the grace of God, man. Yeah. How old are you? Uh, I was seventeen. Seventeen, okay. And you um, were driving. I was driving, and so I, you know, of course you're sh- you're, you're you're shaking up, you know, yeah. in, this, in this accident. And so the car was demolished, and I don't even know if I went to school that day. But the next day, I I uh, I came, and Father Charlie was cool, like he rode a motorbike too, right? You know, so all the kids, like he knew how to connect. Yeah. And um, and he goes, "Hey, man, I, after school, I want you to meet me in front of the gym." And How'd that work with his frock? I'm just trying to trying to think. Did he, no, did he not dude, wear he, his frock he wear on jeans. that thing? Like, he, he, wore was, jeans. he was kind of like Father Shrek, my friend yeah. that I met in Chippewa, man. Yeah, just, just laid a, back. He's just a cool priest, man. Like, and yeah. he loves Jesus, man. You know he's born, he loves Jesus. And so so um, he goes, hey, man, uh, look at that car right there. And I'm not a car guy, you know. Yeah. And he's like, and I was like, oh, that's really cool, man. It was, it, it was a convertible Mustang, I think, 67. And he goes, uh, hey. Let's go for a spin in here. I'm like, all right, cool, man. And, he's, and then he, I get out. He's like, will not you take it for a drive? Let's let's drive. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, what I mean, I've never had done anything with a car like that. And we we get back, and he's in, uh, you know, and and I would, uh, and he goes, hey, I, I want you to use that car because it was the first, my first senior, um, uh, it was it was it was called the the senior ring dance. Yeah, you know, and so. Um, and he goes, you don't have a car, right? You're going to the dance. Yeah, I had to go to the dance. I was class president. And he goes, I want you to ride, take my car. And I'm like, oh, Fancho, I, you know, that's a nice car. He goes, no. And he goes, no, I want you to take the car. I want you to. Wow. Uh, and he goes, I want you to take it to the dance Friday night. And I'm like, Fancho, I didn't even know you had this car. And 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 he, and he reaches his wallet and gives me twenty bucks. And you can imagine back in, yeah, you know, nineteen. 19- 85, you know, it was the August of 85 when that happened. You know, 20 bucks was like five gallons of, you know, five full tanks of, of gas, right? Whoa, yeah. And, oh, whatever, maybe I'm exaggerating, probably. But, um, and, and he handed me keys and he goes, hey, I want you to drive it to school tomorrow. I said, fuck, yeah, I just, he goes, hey, you know what? I can't take, somebody gave me that car. I'm a priest. I'm not supposed to own stuff like this, right? He goes, it basically, it just sits in my garage, and he goes, I can help you out right now. I can't take that car to heaven. Mm. He goes, if you wreck it, you wreck it. And I've never heard anything like that before. And he modeled the the leadership wow. for me. Like, I I wouldn't do that right now. I mean, my 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 daughter's borrowed my my car. I'm like. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gotta gotta pay I have a multi payment on that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, honestly. Yeah. You know, yeah. so and like here's yeah. this guy, like he he modeled love. <laughs> I mean, 
and and he was one of the big inspiration. And then in Geneva, there was this guy Dave Licious who was an, an, uh, in charge of the youth ministry program, and he just took me and mentored me, and he just taught me how to do young life and youth ministry. Yeah. So it has been, and then people along along my way, you know, and you know, leaders we work with, Pastor John, man, he, you know, in in a different way, he showed me model leadership to me, and yeah, and 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 so yeah, there's been some and great people that have. Uh, just poured into me and that's all I want to do. Like, that's why I love poured into you or poured into yeah. anybody, you know what I mean? Right. You know, just, it's you have just a pretty a, good track the, record at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, it's just doing like Jesus, man. So well, I'm sorry. It took a long time. I, no, that's story, okay. Man. It takes as long as you want. Um, what, what you, you stick with people, you know, you stick with people too. It's not just, uh, you know, just, Oh yeah, I believe in you. Like I remember even processing this one, of, one of the first times that we had met, I remember thinking, you know, he didn't ask me to do anything. And I was a, uh, I was probably 19 years old, you know, like we had met, you just talked to me and you didn't ask me to do anything. And I was like, what's that about? You know, like, why wouldn't you ask me to do anything in a good way? Because I was kind of used to people just like wanting something, mm -hmm. you know, I felt mm -hmm. like everybody was transactional and I had my guard up. So if you would have like, I probably would have ran, mm -hmm. but I never felt that way around you. And like, you know, it, just being around you over the years, I, I really tell people this, that you're probably the first person to believe in me who didn't mm. need anything from me, you know? Mm. And the same thing, you got that from Father Charlie. So I, mean, yeah. I yeah. owe him yeah. a big thank yeah. you. And uh, heaven now, yeah. Yeah? yeah, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So how, how long ago did he pass? Did you ever get to talk to him about I, all I, that? I, I never I never did, you know, just because when I left, you know, that, that year, I think he had had Kim and I, uh, he... He actually had us mentor, uh, do like we just first year of marriage, and he's like, "Hey, you guys got married, and this young couple's getting married, and they asked me to do their wedding, and I know nothing about being married. Would you sit down? We were only one year." He was so honest. Yeah, and, and, yeah, he was. I mean, he's like the real deal, man. Like, yeah, that is Jesus. so cool. And and I remember I still have the the paper that I wrote. Me and Kim wrote out the the notes of like. Ten things that we learned in our one year of marriage. Yeah, and wow. I, you know, I don't know where it's, but I, I, I it's probably one. I, it's on, know where it's at, but I don't remember what it says. Yeah, yeah. And um, and we went to where where he lived, and this couple was there, and and um, so that was like probably 1991, and then I, and then I think uh, I think he he moved on. You know, he's kind of getting older. So yeah. I mean, but and then I just and I read in the paper. You know, I, I googled to see how. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's all. Well, how do you how do you stick with people for so long, even if they're off a, off the deep end for a little bit? Yeah. Like I've seen you do well, that. With well, it, and obviously, I haven't stuck with everybody because of yeah, yeah, it, right. It is there is that that side of it. I wouldn't call it transactional, but it was called like, hey, I do want to learn. You know, yeah, you know, and so it's almost you see potential in somebody, or not even just hey. The, the underdog, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, God's just giving me um, a, a care for the underdogs, you know. Yeah. So, so that that is a that's kind of been okay. So, there's the leader, there's the leader, you know. I learned from you know, obviously, Pastor John, like, hey, you know, leadership, you know, the, the one, the three, the 12, you know, like, yeah, that's important to build that like side. organizational yeah, leadership, to build that side. Yeah. You need to do that. And mm -hmm. that's discipleship and serving and serve your, your team. But then on the other side of it is like, hey, I want to go after the one, like the, the lost sheep, the prodigal yeah. son. Like Jesus said, hey, like the father ran, like the fa that was in, because that was against custom too, you know? And so, so that's kind of been my approach. Like who's the one that, you know, uh, that man in my heart is just reaching out to right now? Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, just ma many different various people. Because you see, because, you you know, when we, in ministry, we know people's stories, right? And, and we know right. we're jacked up too. And right. thank God, by the grace of God, there go I. And so, like, it's easy to find out to build your team because it is yeah. it is a transactional thing too. If I pour into you, you're going to help build, you know. Right. But, but it goes beyond that. It's like, at the end of the day, I don't care what you do. Like, I care more about you. And that's yeah. that's got to be the mindset, like, yeah. of serving your team, like, Man, at the end of the day, like you do a great job, man. You you lead this, you do that. You know, Caleb does this. Like, but how do you, day, how do you keep that? How do you keep that heart though? I, 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 like, I, I, just sticking close to Jesus. I I don't know. It's just kind of like, to me, that's where the joy comes. You yeah. Know? You know, like Jesus serving is like that's where the joy is, and and so um, I can't say that I've ever seen you really struggle with bitterness. 
you know? Like, I know that we've all been bitter. Yeah, yeah. But I think sometimes the bitterness, like, if we, we you know, we start to write and off entire groups of people, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's where, like, that that's really a gift, you know, that... that I, I, don't, I don't know. It's a great You've question. been able to keep your heart just pure. I think I think sometimes there I've been yeah. hurt, jaded, et cetera, and I'm like, ah, all people are like that, you know, and I don't know if that's just a safety mechanism, but. No, I mean, you all deal with it. I mean, but yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's like just going back to the father. I, I don't, yeah, I don't just, know. I mean, just, just keeping close just, to the heart. Just, just loving the father and yeah. being through those times and know we're going to get through it. And Yeah. But people are clearly your value. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, like one of our mottos is when. And um, was and I, I saw this somewhere, so it's not original. But it was, you know, going into a building project, and it was building people, changing lives. Yeah, you know, and so we've been. That's been our three year motto. You know, like, and it's become a value. Like, we can build this great new awesome building. Uh, we we prove like, and you're doing right now, prove that you don't need a building to reach people, and you're reaching people, right? You know, and God yeah. gives you this space, and God gave us a space that. That we were able to do ministry. And eventually, you get your building, and and so, um, but it's always been we're building because it's not we're building people, right? And so, just keeping that, uh, uh, and I think that's that's it. But again, there's some people that don't want it, like you. So my thing is like, right, right. I do the in my mind, I'm gonna do the the three strikes policy, you know? Or sure. The, like, yeah. I'm gonna reach out. I'm gonna reach out. I'm gonna reach out. But if you're not gonna step back. But you know, I mean, yeah, if, yeah. if you don't want it, like, okay, there's somebody that wants it. But if you're the, but if if God's put that you're that underdog, you know, and you know, I have a little little dog, kind of our little, yeah. it's our little trophy dog, right? Mm-hmm. It's a little saint, and he he has no knees. <laughs> yep, <laughs> and hops along, he, he hops along. He's he's handicapped in a sense, mm-hmm. or you know, he's yeah, and uh, so he, he he can't, but. Man, we love him, but he teaches. It's like a motto, and it's like a, an example. Like, hey, here's our little, here's our, here's our little dog, right? And and God says, hey, he's the underdog, and and it's a, and it's like, hey, that person, man, they were born with some limitations. I'm gonna reach out to them. Kim and I, we're gonna reach out to that girl, and so yeah. And it's not about what they can do for us. It's like, okay, God says, hey. Go after that one. Yeah. So it's usually going after that one. Do you feel comfortable telling a story? Because I, I know the context of those, but those hearing like might not know the extent of how you've loved people who, man, are really hurting. Yeah. You know? I, I'll just tell the one if, 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 do you have one you want me to go with? I was no, gonna, you, I was whatever go you with want, my, with whatever guy, you feel comfortable my, my, with. My, my pastor friend, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I was um, thinking that one too. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, I I didn't grow up. I Man, I grew up in a in in a home where you know mom and dad were there, but they weren't in love, and and, and my dad wasn't faithful to my mom. You know, yeah. so and that, that that messes you up. Yeah, I but man, but we we were loved. My, my even though my parents they got along, but you know it was just yeah. in in that and and my dad dad was an alcoholic you know so I, I you can just see the brokenness like broken people right you know they, they yeah. just love the best they could and i and, and me and my dad got a great relationship and man he's come to christ and i got to lead him in christ and so it, it's really awesome right mm-hmm. and um and so uh so for me it's like man i've been fortunate you know uh, of course we all got our issues you know family so this one guy man he he grew up rough man he you know, I mean, I don't want to go like all the stuff and poverty and pain and being abused. So, of course, man, you don't you you get you find God and you got a gift it on you. Yeah. That happens. Well, what happened is, you know, through the, through the thing, this this he, he passed at a really good church. And uh, man, he had some hard times, man. He 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 didn't deal with the junk. And I think that's the key is dealing with our junk. Like being, I know you are a proponent and I'm a proponent of counseling and getting healthy yeah, and going yeah. to the word. And I'm not saying this guy, my friend, what, what wasn't, you know, he isn't. And um, well, man, he he became news of the town. He became news of the city. Yeah. You know, he he he, he basically was protecting his church uh, from some, some peoples in the neighborhood. And, the guy pushed his button and he grew up like in a Harley, like his dad was like a Harley guy. And what does he know? He, whatever, maybe he, and snapped, he, he, yeah. he snapped out. 
And of course, you know, rightfully so, but everything went, spiraled down here from there. And uh, Yeah, so it, it, he beat the guy up in the church parking lot. In the church parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. he was a fighter. I mean, like, he was a fighter. and the guy pushed him. The guy was, and, and again, you still don't cross the line. He crossed the line, and then it began. It's interesting because this, this guy was doing this because of a situation where he wanted to protect somebody, mm-hmm. you know, but he was clearly wrong in the way he protected that person yeah. or those people, I should yeah. say. And it yeah. was, it wasn't like, this was like the fifth altercation that's uh, like different. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, man. Like, he, further, he, yeah. he lost everything. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so, and not, not a perfect guy. And right. and we were youth pastors before he was pastor. You know, I mean, so we yeah. were youth pastor buddies. Yeah, we. And so, um, man, I, I just was like, did you see that on health in him? Whenever oh, you yeah, youth yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because I I, I would learn from him because he was really good. Right. You know, right. I mean, like, you learn from anybody. Like right. if, if you have that, you know, that that that. that that open heart, you can learn from anybody. And I was like, man, he's doing some great things. But it's like, man, like, man, that's kind of rough. Like, he was rough around the edges, you yeah. know, and like, uh, I'm more diplomatic and political in a sense in conversations, but right. I'll get to the point directly unless, and, until I'm, then I'll, yeah. but he was like, boom, you know, so, and, and not, and not to say treat the people well because he had, you know, he had a good team. But anyway, uh, he lost everything. I mean, lost everything, wife, yeah. church, man, just went down to, you know, doing whatever minimal job he can do to survive. And and I just would just text him and I just, God just put a love in my, I mean, I already had a love for him because he was, was a friend and, um, and I just wouldn't give up and give up. And I, and I told him, I was like, hey, He dealt man. with substance abuse issues yeah, then. Yeah, and- yeah. And I said, hey, man, you're going to come out of this. Yeah. And, uh, and. I'm, you know, I'm here. I'm a, I want to, and I went up to, and went up to where he lived, and we, and I said, you're gonna come out of this one day, and it, and I said, and it was about five years, and I said, I said, you know, and after I said, one day you're gonna tell your story in my church, yeah, because he thought his whole preaching career was over, and uh, and and they've done a lot of good, and so he did. Yeah, he, he 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 came to a point, and then since then he's passed. You know, what I'm mean? gonna but, pull something up because yeah. I don't know if I ever showed you this. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, he passed away. Yeah, but what? Well, I'll but tell just, you this we just while keep loving. Yeah, while I while I look this up because it might take me a second. Yeah. But I remember reaching out to him, and uh, he said, uh, he said that you were the one who stuck with him, and other people just let him hit rock bottom, and he was, you know, yeah, you know. But it meant he's like, oh, look at that, I got it. Yeah, he's, I, I think that's just love, man, and and it's just for anybody. No, you know, <laughs> you're sitting here as you, before you read it. I'm just sitting there going like, okay, so the hardest people to love, and not to say the hardest people to love is your family, but, you know, like, like I, you always want to just say, okay, God, what's the next step? Hey, I, I can be a better servant to this person. I can be a better servant to yeah. my wife, you know. I mean, um, you know, I can be a better servant to, you know, you know, just different things. And I think that's being led by the Spirit. Like, and I think that's maybe a big key is like being led by the Spirit because we, we're not called to meet. You can't meet every right, need. Jesus right. didn't meet every need. People still walk by when the temple, you know, that he didn't heal. Not that they did, but they maybe didn't ask. But I think we just got to be led to lo- to, oh, to, to serve in that in that realm. But everybody, this, this guy told me in this message, he said, "There's nobody, no one else." He must have said in a public message, but he said, "There's no one else that I would want to share my story with." Larry believed in me when nobody else did, mm-hmm. and he stuck with me. And I'm just like, "Yeah, that's right." You mm-hmm. know, that's that's what you do. But led by the Spirit of God, yeah. And I think you're you, right. That, that's you, it. Told, you, you told me that a while ago. Yeah. Cause I'm like, "How do you remember to text all these people that are going through this?" And, and like, and, and I and I don't have. A, I try to have a heart. list, but I'm not like that. Like, right. I need a low Joe yeah, in, in my right, world, right? Right. Now. Everybody does. But, but <laughs> <laughs> low Joe's access is yeah. and um and so I just think it's just listen to the spirit. Yeah. You know, and yeah. some and, and listen, I the other day <laughs> and I'm gonna tell myself and you know I'll do that. I uh I didn't read a text really well and I'm praying for somebody and they had a situation with their kid. And they were going to the hospital on this day, and I mis misread it and misheard, you know, being in a hurry. And uh, man, I text them the day after, mm-hmm. and like, oh, hey, that was yesterday, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, and you feel like, oh God, how'd you do that? You just, you know. So sometimes you, but but I, I just went back. I am so sorry. Like 
You right. own it. You just own you, it. You own it. You know, like, right. and, and they know you love them, so it's not. Like, and most people perfect, are really yeah. gracious about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so it wasn't like the first time I was reaching out, but I reached, I reached out a day later. Yeah, I've that done was, that. I was a day a later. Of times. Short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but hey. <laughs> yep, yep, I understand. So some leadership one-liners, you know, give me one through the years that like you've really stuck with. You used to say, it's not what you expect, it's what you inspect. Yeah. That always helped me. Like you delegate, you gotta, you actually have to follow through and, and make sure everything's okay. You can't just blindly dump, right? Mm -hmm. Any other ones that you've been thinking about regarding regarding this topic? Regarding this topic. I, I, I think I, I said the one that really is, uh, um, we don't have to serve, we get to serve. Mm -hmm. um, that serving truly is the language of love. Yeah. And, and serving is not, it, it, it's, it's, it's really who you are more than just what you do. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, you know, and that. So, and who that? And who that? There it is. <laughs> there it is. Going to the P raid. Yeah, they're not, they're not, the making, the, they're not no, making the playoffs. No. Next year, maybe even. No, not even next year. No, it's going to be tough. <laughs> it's going to be tough. They they, they should have took Kenny Pickett. Yeah, they really should have. They should have. What were they, number 12 in the pick or whatever? Yeah. Number 12 they, pick? They, had the, they um, had the pick before the Steelers. I'm glad they didn't. I was like, I know. Well, I'm a Steelers fan, too. I mean, I know people yeah. think you're divided and double. You know, I'm unstable, maybe. Mm, AFC, I'm NFC. I think no, you're no, good. It's AFC. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get on Kenny Pickett, it. I knew he was the guy whenever he beat Baltimore, whenever he drove it down You oh, know, yeah. at the end of the game. Yeah. That was the moment I'm like, I told the boys, I'm like, he's going to be here for a long time. Yeah. He's the man. Oh, yeah. He did Absolutely. It. He had that look in his eye, Absolutely. you know? He had that look in his eye. That's that leadership it. look, you know? Yeah. He's no, I am. I'm happy. For that. And, and, I, and I think, like, even if we look at some athletes that, that man, that's great, the GOATs. Yeah. But it's like, and I'm not elevating, like, a, a you know, certain, I mean, I'm going to use Drew Brees, but, like, when you hear the stories about Drew Brees was that, that guy because I, I read his book. Yeah, and yeah. I actually, Lauren, I had gave it my little Lojo. She read Drew Brees' book. I gave, you know, she bought yeah. it for Christmas one time. But the fact is that he, he, the players knew that he cared about them. He was right. the man. He was right. the captain, but he led by example. Yeah. You, you know, and I, and, and that can be in any realm. Like, yeah. it's, it, what about the teachers that have served you? What about the, the youth leaders that have served you? Yeah. Like, you know, I, I think this one lady, Who's who's been with our church for these twelve almost these twelve years, and she works uh, twice a month. Every she's our she's our best kids teacher, and mm. she's a volunteer. Yeah, and faithful twelve years. You know, you know, twenty five weeks a year. You know, going to church, serving, 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 and those babies will never remember her. But but man, wow. when she holds that baby. Yeah. And you know, and they, you know, like y'all do, pray to confessions over the babies, yep. and, and and just loving them babies, like, man, that's serving, like, yeah. and, and that's the that's the key is like, you know, no one will ever know, but Jesus. So, right. serving is like, let's just do it for the glory of God, for the know? glory of so, God, you know, like, yeah, yeah. So, and 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 everybody, you know, I mean, like the the guys or the ladies in the parking lot who, you know. You, you do it, you know. I mean, there's people that's like, like, like the guy, Kel. I love this guy, man. He comes to Jack Camp. He stays up 24 hours, you know. I mean, we'll go climbing yeah. for a little bit, and yeah. Then, but he makes these videos that go on out and show. Like, he's not behind a, the scenes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not. You know, I'm right. probably he probably hates us right now. <laughs> yeah. But like, that's a ministry, man. That's it serving is. the kingdom of God. Yes. And and you know, we seek first the kingdom of God, and so. I think it's. I think if we just change our perspective, our mindset, like I'm gonna go to Jesus, and say, all right, how can I be like Jesus today? Yeah. Well, I need to, Holy Spirit. Hey, Kim needs a little bit of extra love today. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. You know. Hey, this daughter, you know, needs that. Hey, check up on check up on on Pastor Zach, or hey, call call your sister. You know, yeah. just whoever, like that person that comes in, like that person maybe has, has left the church and, but yeah. yeah, hey, just thinking about you today, you yeah. know, and, and like. Now, yeah. do you have all those routines down? Like, I remember you've always been routine. I'm, I'm routine in my that? morning, but yeah. I just, I still listen in the morning. Like, yeah. you, you know, you know, you know when God, and I think God does this for all of us, like there's a time where we get quiet enough yeah. and Holy Spirit speaks and you yeah. start down and, and that's kind of when I even get the paper, like, oh, text this guy, call this guy, or do this or do that. Right. So, and that's that's I, so pivotal, yeah. For somebody who wants to pastor people, like love people, like Jesus did, like mm -hmm. we have to spend time with Jesus, and he put he brings people, and he brings people, to, yeah, yeah. 
And I, I think that's why Jesus was so effective. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like with that. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. He loved the one. He loved the one. Yeah. He yeah. Loved, We've had some good conversations about that. It's like, I was thinking about Philip, the evangelist, mm -hmm. how the Lord took him to, he was in a crowd, but he was serving with a bunch of people. Then he took him to the Ethiopian eunuch mm. to preach to the one. Like he chased down the chariot. That's what, and yeah, then that's after what. that, God takes him to a crowd by himself. It was almost like, you're going to learn how to do this. Then I'm going to see if you really care yeah. about the one. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm going to open up doors for you to do this on your own. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. Right? I, I think at the end of the day, man, you know, when we stand before the Lord, um, you know, you know, we're, we're going to see like that act of love made a difference in right. somebody's life, you know, and you, and you, and you guys do the same thing. You, you serve the community and when you find out there's needs and, and you don't have to broadcast like these needs, but the other day, Pastor Nick, he was wearing his Champion Life Church tea, uh, sweatshirt and he was in, in, uh, in Walgreens and, and this lady was just, he can just tell she was having a rough time and she turned around and, and Pastor Nick was wearing the shirt and she goes, oh, Champion Life Church. Wow, Champion Life Church gave me a, a Thanksgiving turkey basket. And uh, man, that that was really nice. I never got to say thank you, you know. And yeah. it's just like we don't. Know, I don't. I don't know who this lady is. Somebody from our church asked if, if if they can get a basket for somebody. And and I think like that's that's what we wanna we wanna do. It's like, I mean, hey, we wanted to come to heaven. We don't, not that we wanted to. Come. If she comes to church, great. Get into a good church where she yeah. can grow. But at the end of the day, it's like, hey, man, we share some love. That it's the it's the it's the one. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's what that that's really the whole thing of servant leadership. It's it's leading by example. What do you want to see in your teams that you're leading right now? Love love people, man. Right. Is yeah, that I mean, what's all I mean, about? it's just it is so we complicated, man. Like right. discipleship, like this like it's all about loving people and, and being that light, being that right. sun, like knowing, you know, you've heard this play. You got a pulse, you got a purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like we all have a purpose, man. We, you know, and but then God gives us specific plans, and so your plan is that. But I, I, you got a pulse, you got a purpose. Like find it, like do it, and, and and it doesn't have to. You know, you don't need to get the accolades for it. You know, I think yeah. that's that that's something that uh, that we have. It, it, that's just kind of a lifestyle. It's just kind of a, yeah. a value that well, we do for the kingdom. And I last you know, yeah. yeah last off last yeah. question I have, and yeah. this is this is one. I don't know. If you don't have an answer, it's all right. But like, you've been around. You've been around a long time, and you've learned a lot. You've read a lot. You've studied a lot. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and so, from that, are there any things that you see right now that you would give, like, kind of as a as a as an encouragement to young leaders who really want to walk in that purpose? Yeah, man. It's all about your heart, man. Yeah. I I think that a young leader can say, okay, and it takes time. Like, don't expect great fruit overnight, you know? Right, right. You know, like, get involved and just, you know, get down to the nitty gritty and mm -hmm. serve. Nobody sees, clean the church, move this up, like, do that. Like, if you can do that, if God can trust you, right, when no one sees you, then he can trust you in front of people. Because if you come in front of people, and you're not there yet. It's not about people. It's about you. Yeah, man, you're gonna hurt people, and and so it's it's, true. it's it's like this is all about the people God loves that Jesus shed His blood for. Like that's right. why we in ministry. Ministry is again to serve. Ministry is to be a waiter. You know, um, what does a waiter do? Like even a busboy, like it's no glory. And I mean, it's like people tell you what to do. Yeah. You know, and or you're an attendant. You know, my parking lot attendant. I think of that. Like, no man, like that's what you call to do, right? That that's really ministry. Jesus said you want to be great, not great and like, hey, have my name and like people know how many people follow me on. Right. On and and I get caught up in all of that. But I got away from that because I was spending more time. Like, no man, it's like I, it's not about. Yeah. It's about him being known. You know. Yeah. And so, um, and, and so, like this, and I, I have this scripture up on my up on my um, where I put my keys and and 
and, and it's in First Peter 5, 6. And it's out of the Message Bible. And, and, and this is kind of like, to me, as we would just, you know, you'd ask me to come do this. I was like, man, this is kind of final scripture. And it's First Peter 5, 6, the message says, be content with who you are. Yes. And, uh, you know, you've always said, just be you, right? right you know, right. I'm just going to be Larry, man. I, I can't be anybody else. I'm just going to be Larry. So be content with your, I, I, I can't be somebody else, but be content with that, yeah. right? And don't put on airs. And, you know, and I've done it. I've been like, hey, I wanted to, I wanted somebody maybe to like me or do something like that's putting on airs. Like, don't mm. let, let, let the, the whole thing. Jesus said, when you go to a temp, but you know, go to a banquet, let, don't sit at the honor seat. Let somebody bring you like, it doesn't matter anyway, sit there, but don't put on airs. Just be you, like be content with your, um, God's strong hand is upon you and he'll promote you at the right time. Mm -hmm. And promoting doesn't mean that you become a, you know, what they call celebrity pastor now right, <laughs> or right, whatever, right. like your name and lights or whatever, uh, or whatever. Uh, now, God uses people. Like, I mean, I, that's a part of the, their plan, the part of the, the plan of God. You know, God uses, you know, you to do that. But like, God, will, God will promote you right there. And I think just being faithfulness as a leader, man, we're called to Beaver County, and I think God's promoting not me, but promoting the faithfulness of the people of, of the church and, right. and a part of that is yeah. blessings, right? Because and, and then it says, live mm. carefree before God because he is most careful with you. Yeah. And I love that. Like, And so I read that every day, like, just be content. You know, you don't put just God, God's hands on you. Like, right. just do what I've called you to do. Mm -hmm. You're going to stand before me. I'm not going to stand before, when I stand before God, I'm not going to say, yeah, but I tried to, no, I'm like, did you do what I asked you to do? Did, and, um, you know. And when you drop the ball, right? That's all right. You can, uh, you, you know, another, uh, uh, you get another play. Yeah. You know, I think that that's what God has to do, man. man so. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, as as you were talking earlier, that's what I was thinking about. Man, contentment has something to do with with spiritual yeah. leadership. You know, yeah, contentment. Right. Like I'm gonna do what God. Even Paul talked about not boasting beyond the realm of of his circle of influence. And I thought it was so interesting. He's like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna expand. We're gonna pray that God expands our influence, yeah. but we're not gonna, right. we're not gonna step out and just do it on our own. And then in Ezekiel, random scripture reference here, Satan was in the garden. He he fell though because he wasn't satisfied with what with that circle of influence that God gave him. Mm -hmm. He wanted to step outside. He wanted more. He wanted more. He wanted more. And so it's good to be hungry as a leader. But there's yeah. also the danger, I think, on the other side of just mm. striving for more, striving for more, striving for more, yeah, because you want right, to make man. your name known. Yeah. So be the be the leader with the bended knee, not the loud, loudest that's voice. It. That's beautiful. That's I right. love it. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. I think yeah. that's a wrap. I think it's I, I think good that's one. a great quote I think right you there. did it. I but think I, I think before we go, I, I was going to wash your feet. Can I use your coffee and take your <laughs> yeah, socks Yeah, you could use on? my coffee. That'd be great. Because I know you kind of- I love you, people touching my feet. Yeah. Well, what you could do you're is you can wash- Yeah, a little bit. You can wash my feet, then you can eat out of- You can grab like potato chips. I have like a bag of those. You just go in there, eat them. I'll, I'll like throw them away. <laughs> yeah, y'all don't know like but. Pastor Zach, I'll, I'll like- <laughs> Lick his cup and say, "Here, Zach, you want? Can I have a sip? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, no, like, it's yours. Sloppy sip, <laughs> sloppy sip. Uh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I love you, man. <laughs> I love you too, man. Right, thanks for thanks the honor, for man, and be able to share it with yeah. everybody today in the kingdom of God. Just, hey, man, if it helps one, let's just go and hey, love and serve, man. Right. Let's just let's just do it. The greatest of all is a servant of all. Mm -hmm. Love it, love yeah, it. Thanks for all you do, Jesus. Yep. Good love job you, today. It was off. It was, that was fun. fun. It was yep. good. Yep.